Hi, my name is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast of the New Testament. I'll be using as the text the King James Version, along with the Joseph Smith Translation. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll also be using quotes from general authorities of the Church, the Apostles and Prophets, and BYU professors and others, and uh, every word out of the Scriptures themselves. So if you're ready for a really detailed analysis of the New Testament, you've come to the right place. Welcome. Hi there, welcome back. This will be for 1 Peter chapter 5. The heading reads, The elders are to feed the flock of God. Humility and godly graces lead to perfection. Verse 1, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. By classing himself with this high apostolic calling as an elder, Peter dramatizes the preeminence of the priesthood over the offices in the priesthood, a principle which dignifies the status of all brethren who hold the holy priesthood and raises them, as it were, to apostolic stature. That was by Elder McConkie. When we, when we perform ordinances in the temple for brethren, which office in the priesthood are they ordained to? It's to the office of an elder. The Melchizedek priesthood is necessary for exaltation. Certain officers are not. Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery were ordained elders on the 6th of April, 1830, thus obtaining the first ordained offices in the church in this dispensation. Peter, James, and John had conferred the Melchizedek priesthood upon them in May or June of 1829, but there were no offices in the priesthood until after the organization of the church. It is not possible to hold an office in an organization that does not exist. Later, later other offices came as the needs of the ministry required. That was by Joseph Fielding Smith. Bruce R. McConkie said, Ordinations to offices must conform to the law of common consent. Peter's calling and election had been made sure he had already received the promise of eternal life in the Father's kingdom. Verse 2, Feed or superintend the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So he's telling us again to prepare for the second coming. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour." Whom, res whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accompanied or accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto, unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Silvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose, I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein ye stand. The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, he, he might, we might be thinking that that's uh, Rome when he says Babylon, saluteth you, and, and so doth Marcus my son, probably John Mark, who wrote the, the Gospel of Mark. Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with you, all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that's the end of the chapter, and we will see you next time.